Let me start with some questions. Are you an investor? What do you look for in a potential investment? Most investors follow a checklist. They want their money to be safe and they want it to grow. That's the whole point of investment, getting returns. Now, there are some investments which guarantee returns. And corporate America believes that India is part of that list, the destination to get some big returns. So they're turning to Indian companies and Indian stocks. In other words, they're bullish on India. Take Warren Buffett, for example. He's a billionaire investor. A few days back, he met his shareholders at the annual meeting of his company, Berkshire Hathaway. It is one of America's richest companies, sitting on a cash pile of $189 billion. So Warren Buffett asked, was asked if his company would put some of this money in India, and he said it could be a good idea. In fact, let me quote from his response. There may be an unexplored or unattended opportunity, but that may be something in the future. That is something a more energetic management at Berkshire could pursue. Obviously, India, I'm sure there are loads of opportunities in a place like India. There may be an unexplored or uh, unattended to opportunity in that area. I'm not the one to do it. Um, but that may be something that uh, uh, in the future. Buffett is 93 years old now. He is optimistic about India, but he wants future leaders to pursue opportunities here. Basically, he's sticking to his core values of patience and long-term investing. There are others who want to move faster. Like Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan, he's been constantly talking about India and its potential. A few weeks ago, he praised Prime Minister Modi and his development initiatives. Last year, he spoke about Indian markets and the optimism around them. Dimon feels the positive sentiment is completely justified. Again, I have a quote. It's not just because of the complications with China. I think that's an opportunity, but some of this optimism would have been there anyway. And the statement is revealing because it gives an insight into the thinking of corporate America. What fuels their optimism about India? The most obvious factor is China and its economic decline, which is a well-documented fact now. China's economic policies have caused huge losses to investors. Let me show you data from January this year. Chinese stock markets have wiped out some $6 trillion in three years. That's double Britain's annual economic output, $6 trillion wiped out. Needless to say, no investor likes to lose their money. So for better returns, they have turned to India. And there's more data to support the shift. In the past seven odd years, Indian equities have delivered a return of more than 10%, about eight out of 10 times, with no recorded losses. So Indian markets are performing better than China. But like Diamond pointed out, that's not the only factor. Corporate America has more than one reason to like India. They're also drawn by the high domestic demand and large infrastructure investments in India. So Wall Street is looking at India from a long-term perspective. In February, Bank of America released a survey. They spoke to more than 200 fund managers in the U.S. and together they manage over $600 billion in assets, these fund managers, $600 billion. They were asked which countries they're bullish about. 19% of the fund managers said they prefer India. They also said they're avoiding countries like China and Thailand. So there is a positive sentiment around India. That's a good thing. Now, India will have to find a way to keep this confidence, to ensure that this bull run lasts for a long time. And the key to that would be economic growth. From 2014 to 2023, India's GDP grew by 55%. New Delhi's challenge would be to maintain this momentum. And for that, it will have to plug a few gaps, like domestic consumption. It needs a boost. Look at the private consumption expenditure. This is the measure of the money people spend on buying things. In the last financial year, the spending grew at just 3%. That's the slowest pace in 20 years. Then there is a job problem. More people are entering the workforce every year in India, but there are fewer jobs to go around. 83% of jobless Indians today are the youth. Even more worrying is the skills gap. Let me show you this latest report. India has less than 2,000 senior engineers who are skilled enough to develop core AI products. So investing in promising sectors would also be key.
India's long-term outlook remains unchanged. Experts say India will remain among the world's fastest growing economies. This is what draws foreign investors to India. It's a win worth celebrating, but without losing sight of the challenges ahead. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison LaGrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the global south. Join me every weekday live on First Post.